It's now the time of year again where doctors are considering what specialty training programs they want to apply for. One of the programs that's available is the GP training program. If you are considering applying to this program, it can be a bit of a process going through the application. So in this video, I'm going to go through what the GP training program is, what you need to apply for the GP training program. I'm also going to discuss the application itself. Then I'm going to go through a bit of a timeline for the whole application process from when you apply to when you get an offer at the end of it. The GP training programme is a training programme needed to become a general practitioner in the UK. It enables you to join the General Medical Council, otherwise known as the GMC's Register for General Practitioners. Essentially, the programme itself is made up of three years of training where you also need to set exams that you need to pass in order to become a GP. Once you pass these exams and complete the training, you'll be able to apply for the membership of the Royal College of General Practitioners, as well as being awarded a certificate of completion of training. Essentially, at the end of it, you become a qualified GP. Now, as you can see from this timeline, the GP training programme is broken down into six six months rotations. In your first year you'll typically do one rotation in a hospital setting and one rotation in a GP setting. In the second year you'll either do two six month rotations in a hospital setting or one six month rotation in a hospital setting and again one six month rotation in a general practice. And then finally in your final year you'll do 12 months in a general practice. In order to apply for the GP training program you need to have done the following. First you obviously need a medical degree. So you'll either need your MBBS or your MBCHB or equivalent degree, basically a Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery degree. Then you also need to be registered with the GMC with full registration to practice medicine in the UK at the intended start date of the GP training programme. You also need to show that you're able to work at an appropriate level to start the programme itself. So by this I would typically mean working at an SHO level. And most people have done the foundation training programme and can hold a foundation programme certificate of completion. And a key thing to remember is this has to be completed within the past three and a half years prior to the start date of the training programme. So that means you can have a break before applying for the GP training scheme and doing a three year for example, but it has to have been less than three and a half years. So if you've taken an extended break, you may fall out with this time frame. If you have been out of training for greater than three and a half years, or you didn't do the foundation training programme, or if you graduated outside of the UK, you can still apply for the GP training programme, but you do need to get another form filled out. And this form is known as the CREST form. Now the CREST form itself stands for Certificate of Readiness to Enter Specialty Training. And this form needs to be filled out by a consultant who you've worked under for at least three months and fairly recently. And they basically need to be able to say that you're competent to work at an F2 level or an SHO level. And just a bit of a heads up as well, this has recently changed. The version that was previously used is the 2021 version. This has now been updated to the 2024 version. And basically, if you have got the 2021 version signed, you need to go back and get the 2024 version signed by the consultant as well, as it's no longer valid. And basically going forward, this new version should be used as part of the GP training application. Now this has happened to me as well, because I'd had the 2021 version filled out by the consultant and I've had to go back and get it signed again so that I can apply for this cycle. The good news is the 2024 version is much simpler and rather than being 11 pages long it's now only four or five. It's fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. But to sum up you'll either need the FPCC form from completing the foundation training program or you're going to need a CREST form signed by a consultant who you've worked under before you apply for the GP training program. Other things you'll need to imply include being eligible to work in the UK as well as having an in-date driving license. If you don't have a driving license you'll need to ensure that you're able to transport yourself from places that you needed to be within the training program and make you tick a box as part of your application agrees that you're responsible for getting yourself from place A to place B. You also need to show that you've progressed in your career by documenting down your employment history since you graduated from medical school. Basically you need to be shown that you've been doing some CPD and you've actually been working towards something. The final thing you'll need to be able to do to actually apply for the GP training programme is sit the MSRA exam but I'll come on to that in a little bit. Let's start with the application though. To complete the application, you're going to need, first need to create an account on Oriel. This is the platform you use to apply to most specialty training programs, including the GP training scheme. It's not the most intuitive platform in the world, but the GP training application itself is fairly straightforward. The first task is logging into Oriel, then finding the correct program to apply for it. If you want to apply for the GP training scheme, well, you're first going to need to find it first on this platform. Once you log in, you'll notice a little tab that says vacancy on the left hand side. I'm not really sure what the symbol is, but it kind of looks like a little megaphone. Once you click on the vacancy, so this will bring up all the specialty training program vacancies that are available. You're going to want to narrow this down so if you go down to the tab that says I'm applying for and then select medical then underneath it where it says training programs type in general practice this will narrow down the applications that you can apply for essentially. Now on the left hand side you're going to see vacancies that relate to G the GP application. A lot of these will be academic posts and I won't go into these in this video. However if you're looking to apply for the national GP training program the one you want to click on is the GP NRO general practice ST1 application. Once you click on this it'll say apply in the top right hand corner. As you can see mine's already changed to submitted because I've already submitted my application. Now you can go through the application and the application itself is split into five sections. Part one, part two, supporting information, preferences 
and confirm and submit. Part one consists of two pages of personal information, so your name, address, etc. And this third page is basically going to go through your work history since you've been either done the foundation training program or since you graduated from medical school. If you have done the foundation training program, you're going to want to put down your F1 post and your F2 post. And if you've taken an F3 year, you're going to need to include every job you've done since you've taken time out of training. And that includes any local work you've done. It'll also ask you about employment gaps at the bottom of the application. You just need to explain what you did if you have got any gaps. After this, you'll move on to part two. And this is basically the bit where it asks you about any previous specialty training programs you've been a part of or if you hold a national training number. This won't apply to most GP applicants but select the answers that's appropriate to you. You'll also need to fill in your GMC details on this page and you'll need to put down the date you gained full registration with GMC. You can find this out by simply logging into your GMC account and it'll note it on the website. At the bottom of the page, you'll have the option to transfer your score if you've previously applied for the GP training program within the last year. So for example, I applied for the GP training program last year and got an offer. I have the option to transfer my MSRA score from my last application and use it again this year. And as you can see, for my application, I've already done this. So I don't have to sit the MSRA exam again this year. If you haven't applied before, you'll be given a set of dates after you apply to sit the MSRA exam. If you want a guide to the MSRA exam, I've done a video about this previously and I'll link it up here and you can click on it. The next page in part two is you need to fill in your reference details. You'll need three references from consultants that you've worked under recently. You'll be happy to be contacted about giving a reference. The next page has lots of questions which relate to your fitness to practice and should be fairly self-explanatory. Then on page four of part two, you'll need to either upload your FPCC certificate form showing that you've completed the foundation training program within the past three and a half years or if this doesn't apply to you you'll click no on a bunch of options and then it'll eventually give you the option to add a crest form which has been filled out by a consultant and as I said previously this needs to be the latest 2024 version otherwise your application won't be accepted. After this you'll have to fill out your medical degree details then on page five of part two you'll have to tick the declarations about the application and the information you filled out basically saying all the information you've put in is true. Then you're onto the supporting information page. This is the first page where it'll ask you if you hold a full driver's license and basically gets you to acknowledge it's your responsibility to get yourself from place A to place B when you're on the GP training program. Then on the following page, there's a small little box asking you why you wanted to apply for the GP training scheme. It's quite short, it doesn't need to be too much detail. Then you move on to your preferences. It starts with all the programs in the not wanted column. So you have to drag the programs that you'd like to be considered for, and move them across to left and then rank them in order as well, order of preference. If there's a program you definitely wouldn't accept, there's no point in ranking it in the wanted column because you are it anyway so there's no point in dragging it across. Make sure that you consider wherever you're wanting to apply for you're going to be based there for three years so ask yourself would you be happy to live in this location and be part of that program for that length of time. Once you've filled out your preferences go on to the final page which is just for you to review your application and confirm that you're ready to submit it. Once you are then you can hit the submit button. After that it's a bit of a waiting game. As I said before, there's no interviews for the GP training applications anymore. So provided you meet the entry requirements, you'll be sent an email to select a date for the MSRA examination. It's usually about a month after you've applied. To give you a bit of an overview, this is the timeline for the latest round of applications for the GP training scheme. And the timeline I'll be following as I've also applied this year. You can see that it does involve a bit of waiting around, but if you've applied, make sure to start your MSRA revision long before you actually get a date to sit the exam. Start preparing in advance. It's definitely an exam where studying and practice questions do help the score. The applications for the GP training are open every six months. So round one opens typically in October and closes in November. Then round two typically opens in July and then closes in August. It's important to note that there are often a lot less jobs in round two and this can make it the process of applying for GP training in round two a lot more competitive. Also, not all the GP training programs are available in round two. So some locations aren't even part of the round two application process. Hopefully you found this helpful if you are considering applying for the GP training program or if you just wanted a bit more information about the process. If you have found this video useful, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.